G'day everyone, Viv here. Welcome back, I hope you're all keeping well. In no way, shape or form do I have an impulsive or addictive sort of personality. That is a lie. I'm not very spontaneous either. <laughs> I just get excited and I just want to have lots of stuff like right now. So when I received an old metal trebuchet as part of a trade I did some time back, I immediately started looking for more. This model that I had was missing some parts and I did want more of them, so, you know, I thought, why not spend an evening and crank up the lasers and make my own? The first model I did was pretty much a copy of the GW model. And after looking at various pictures of the real world trebuchets online, it just seemed small. It was also a copy of the GW model, so I spent some time designing my own that was a little bit bigger. Not much, you know, just enough to make it look good, but not difficult to store. In between packing orders and generally pottering around at the studio, I cut a few copies on the lasers. As always, when you're trying to get something done quickly, there's always a problem, right? After messing around cleaning lenses and mirrors and double checking I had everything focused properly, I managed to cut a couple of kits that would assemble well. It's a pretty basic model and obviously being MDF it lacks the detail of something that's sculpted and cast or 3D printed. But being able to cut as many copies as I want can't be a bad thing. Like, as I said, I just want lots of stuff. Assembling the model was pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's a pretty simple kit. I generally apply PVA with my finger applying glue to the parts by running my finger along the edge where I need glue and kind of scraping it on the part as I run my finger along it. If you don't like getting messy fingers or enjoy the feeling of peeling off that dried PVA skin from your fingers, you could use a toothpick or a brush or some other unnecessary tool to apply the glue. Whoa, whoa unnecessary tools? Not everyone likes grotty fingers. In certain places, it does help to use super glue. I usually use it on small parts and sometimes in conjunction with PVA. I'll use the PVA to create a good bond, but apply a small dot of super glue on the corners to help the pieces bond together quickly. Super glue bonds to MDF really quick, so you don't need to spend time waiting between steps. It can also be useful when you have a large piece, like the main uprights on this kit, that can slip or fall over and need to have its supporting beams installed quickly. So using some super glue can really help in these situations. There's some small parts on this kit and whenever I am assembling a kit that's got really small parts where they can go onto the model without glue having to hold them in place, I will normally assemble those pieces in place and then just drop a little bit of super glue just onto the joins afterwards after everything is assembled that way the super glue will sort of wick itself into the join and glue the model together for me that way I don't have to worry too much about getting you know big clumps of PVA all over the place or having to clean up a whole bunch of uh, you know overspilled glue that type of stuff like most things I do, I always look back and think, I should have done this, or that would have worked well if I did blah blah blah. Yeah, because you're an impulsive person who doesn't think about what they're doing. Assembling the kits first before adding some texture was one of those, ah shit, this would have been easier if kind of moments. I recently watched a video that guy from Midwinter Minis did on the topic of cutting towards or away from yourself and you know what was safer and what was best practice or appropriate for what you were trying to do. And with that rattling around in my head and constantly thinking, I'm going to stab myself, I proceeded to add some texture to the model using a file to round off the edges. Nothing screams MDF model kit louder than perfectly square edges. The trebuchets were built in the field, so they should be a little rough. So I wasn't too afraid to gouge out some chunks. Not too much, just enough to help distract the eye from the fact that this is an MDF kit. Throwing further caution to the wind, I grabbed a pointy metal scrapey thing and added more texture to the model by dragging on parts where I wanted some detail. With Guy still ringing in my ears and I'm going to stab myself, playing on repeat in my brain, I decided to use a little caution and grabbed a piece of MDF to help provide some stability and a little protection. 
Just in case I did slip, I wouldn't stab my fingers. There's also rounded parts on the trebuchet, but I can't cut round beams on the laser, so again, with my trusty files and sandpaper on a stick tools, I rounded off some of the edges on the parts that should be round. It worked well enough for me and should help define those areas of the model that clearly would have been round beams or metal rods. I did notice that this made the model a touch more fragile where the arm and the pivot beam meet, so I coated the whole area with a good amount of superglue to help provide a little bit of extra strength. Now, clearly, all this filing and texturing would have been much easier to do if I didn't assemble the model first, but, you know, whatever. It worked and I didn't stab myself, but next time I'll probably think about the build a little more before I just start gluing things together. Time for painting. The first step was a quick spray with a flat black primer. This is nothing fancy, just a cheap can of paint from Bunnings. I used fiddly bits if you really need to know, but I hate that paint. It's cheap, but you know, it works. When it comes to painting things, I don't really think about it too much. I just grab colors and start painting. Hmm, not impulsive, hey? Starting with, I think maybe chocolate brown from Vallejo, I watered the paint down. Uh, you know, quite a bit. You know, basically I flooded the paint well with extra water and really thinned it down. And using the biggest brush I could grab my hands on, uh, I just slapped that paint all over the model. I just basically want to get this whole thing a nice deep dark brown. To help add some variation to the base color, I applied maybe some light brown again from Vallejo you know I thin that down a little bit and then using the same brush that I'd used to apply the chocolate brown I didn't rinse it I didn't clean it I just started applying that light brown in various places around the model whilst that chocolate brown was still wet hoping that the paints would mix together and give me a little bit of variation Freshly cut timber is a very pale yellow, almost creamish color. But you know, this contraption of war has been sitting out there in the field for months. And you know, I wanted to look a little aged, kind of like a fine wine. So having some variation in the base color should help that come through. After waiting patiently for the model to dry, I used a makeup brush to apply several different colors. I knew I'd be applying a wash to this model at some stage and you know I have a homemade wash it's basically a thin down decking stain and from experience using that in the past I knew it would desaturate and mute all the tones underneath it so I wasn't afraid to bring that dry brushing highlights up quite high. After going back and forth a few times between colours building up my highlights I reached a point where I thought adding some metal to this model would help break up all the brown. Now, I'm not a siege expert, I'm not an engineer, I have no idea if trebuchets were made entirely out of water, if they had metal components, but, you know, I figured just adding something metallic to this model would help, you know, it just stand out a little bit more. So I used some gunmetal grey from Vallejo to pick out all the parts that I wanted to be metal. Gunmetal is a nice dark metallic, but to survive the wash I was going to slap all over this model and still have that metallic glint, I decided I would highlight it up using a little bit of chainmail silver, again from Vallejo. One final highlight, this time with silver from, you guessed it, Vallejo. The model was looking pretty good. I could have left it here and been happy. But I was hoping that by applying the wash it would help enhance all that detail I had carved in with that pointy stabby metal tool thing by sinking into the recesses. As I was looking at the model and knowing that the wash I have is really good at muting tones, I decided I would add a really strong highlight using some Iraqi sand, applying that again with a makeup brush. I don't normally use model paints when painting terrain, but they were what I had available at home and for something this small I don't really mind, but certainly on larger pieces I'd be using different paints. After giving the whole model a soaking with that wash, I guess it's more of a stain really. I mean, well that's what it is, it's a, it's a watered down decking stain. The rest was just a matter of gluing it to a base and adding some basing material. 
I've got a mix of different sorts of materials, sand and dirt and some sawdust flock and some foam flock, all combined and mixed up together that I've been using on all my Minas Tirith models. Kind of like a base ready material. In hindsight, I should have added some dirt underneath the trebuchet as it really wouldn't have all that grass growing underneath and around it. Might come back at some stage and add something to help take away that look that it has right now, like someone just put it on a patchy, grassy piece of land. Overall, I'm really happy with the model. Aside from some issues with the basing and having to come back and maybe, you know, with a, a paint or a stain or something and just, you know, remove that grass from underneath it, it looks really good. In comparison to the Games Workshop model, it's clearly bigger. I do like it a lot more. I can cut as many of them as I want. And the details that I had carved into it with those, you know, metal pointy stabby things uh, has come through. It's subtle, but you can see it. It's there. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're all safe and well, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.